So GitHub just dropped a brand new product, the GitHub Copilot CLI. This is a new terminal tool that's going to be competing with cloud code, which I think is the undisputed king in this space. So I'm actually curious to see how it stacks up. I'm not going to do a comparison in this video, but I'll do one in a subsequent video. In this video, I just want to give you my raw takes on it. I'm going to use it against real production code and try to get it to do real work because I'm not interested in having these tools, you know, do a bunch of demo applications for me. And I'm going to share my thoughts along the way and hopefully it's better. I'm actually excited about this. So with that, let's jump right into the actual tool itself. You go to your CLI here. It's on github.com forward slash github forward slash copilot dash CLI. This is in public preview. So it's brand new. There's not a lot of information about it other than it was just dropped just recently. There's already about 36 issues so far. I was going through the issues just to kind of get a feel of what, uh, what some of the problems are and they're coming in fast. Cause I think the last time I looked at it, there was like 22 issues or something. So this is actually exciting. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of buzz around this because at this particular point, Claude is basically the dominant player. The thing that I find interesting here is that Windows is experimental. This is Microsoft, a company that makes Windows that has experiment like I find that very fascinating. So with the first thing you need to do in order to install it is so just do npm install. Just one thing before I get right into it. This GitHub Copilot tool is not to be confused. Already existing GitHub Copilot dash CLI tool that was published three years ago. I think this tool is now being depreciated, but just be aware that this name is not a new thing which was inspired apparently by Microsoft Codex CLI. So it's like inception because GPT has a CLI, which has a copilot tool, which then has a Microsoft has their own CLI, which then GitHub has their own CLI, which they've now rewritten as GitHub CLI. What are we going to do? We're going to run it. I'm going to install it and then run it against this project because I'm working on this calendar system here. And I actually have a real world problem, which is when you drag and drop this item, so these are just jobs. When you drag and drop this item, you're supposed to be able to select the time that you want the item to be thing and it doesn't work. So we're going to try to see if we could fix that. We're going to see if GitHub Copilot can get us going there. Let's just jump right into the terminal. We're going to do an installation. Yeah, I'm install. Okay. So to launch it, you just got to type Copilot in the terminal. There we go. That was pretty easy. By the way, you should mention you need to have a GitHub premium account in order to make this work which I'm already over quota. So we'll see how that works out. So Copilot may read files needs your permission. Yes, proceed. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. Kind of looks like Claude, maybe a little simpler, I would argue, because it's just the basics right now. So I'm logged in with GitHub as Twain demo. How do I change my login? How do I log out? Slash command, log in, log out. So that's nice. We got IntelliSense, as I call it because I'm old school. Copy this key, open up the terminal, continue. So basically it just brings you to a page like this, standard stuff, click on login, confirm, sign in successfully, there we go. Okay, so first thing I notice is that there's no tab completion or anything, it's just text. So I need to change my location. Let's see, how do we do that? Add a directory, CWD change working directory. Okay, so CWD. Let's just get a directory here. CWD that press enter. Yes. Proceed. Okay. So we're there. So let's just see. I got no changes. And let me just think about this problem that I have. So currently when the user drags and drop the modal pop up that says select time does not allow, does not implement the same update functionality. So currently when the user navigates, Let's fix that. All right, let's see. So like I said, this is a real world test to see if it actually is going to perform and just compare how that's compared against GitHub itself. Do you want to run command? Yes. So apparently there is a way that you can set the dash dash all tools, but I'm not certain how do you do that? Do I do it? So approve grab with this session, I click in yes. Would you like this operation to access paths outside your directory? Sure. What paths are you accessing? Okay. So this thing has completely gone off the rails is looking through my entire folder, not in order to find relation to 
calendar. So we're just going to kill this and go back in again. We're going to say no and do slash exit just to get a new terminal. Then we're going to do copilot again. I think I know why, because I'm currently in this directory. So I have to navigate to the directory that I'm in and then run copilot. I was under the impression you could actually just do it from the inside of the text box, but I'm now realizing that the text box is just text box. So we need to do CD. So copilot, and this time we're going to pass it the dash dash allow all tools. And let's see how that works. Okay. So yeah, there we go. It's set the correct folder. That was my bad permissions. Yes. Oh, where's my prompt to damn it. Oh, good thing. I'm using whisper. So where's whisper? Let's copy your prompt paste. Okay. Let's try that prompt again. See what happens. Note to self, you gotta be in the directory that you're working in. You cannot put that path inside of the actual text box. Path does not exist. What is this about? So interesting. Even though I did put the dash dash allow, it's still asking me for permissions. Would you like to add these directories to the allowed list? I don't know what that's about. And I keep getting this parent directory doesn't exist, which I'm not certain why. So it seems like that allowed thing didn't work because I did enter it, but it's still prompting me for stuff. This was one thing that I just don't like about GitHub Copilot. It keeps asking you for permission. And I understand why, because you don't want things to just go haywire and it needs to be some sort of prompt, but yeah, it's just annoying. Okay. So let's see what am I missing here? When I run the application, I drag, drag the month view. I don't see any API calls on the network. Ensure that the set time navigation modal box works. So what's my take so far? What I'll say is that I feel like I'm not getting as much feedback loop in comparison to VS code. Normally with VS code, I could keep track of the files a little bit more. So as with, you know, VS code, you could see sort of the side panel of what's going on, but also on the side here, it shows you all the files being changed and then it asks you which ones you want to keep versus which ones you want to revert. I don't get that feedback here because obviously I'm on a collab command line. So for me personally, this is kind of a disadvantage. However, for other people, if you're native to the command line, this might still be uh, fairly relevant. Do an API call. Okay. That did work. Let's find out this is 23rd. Go back to the week view. Okay. So that did work indeed. All right. So that actually worked and it actually did a pretty good job. I was able to sort of trace along the code. A couple of things I like about the tool altogether is the fact that it does a pretty good job of formatting. One of the things that I kind of struggled with with cloud was that the formatting was a little bit off. This here, they have emo nice emojis and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. I'll do a full comparison with cloud in another video. So I won't really talk too much about that. It's, it's, it's spending some time to kind of highlight certain functions that it was calling out so that you have some visibility because I feel like you're kind of at a disadvantage because with the IDE visual studio VS code, you're able to see the files change in real time. And then you could skim through them, which is what I tend to do as I'm programming. I'm skimming through the files to see the changes with this implementation. You can see the file was changed, but you don't know what was changed in the file. Yeah. That would be the thing I would say is kind of a minor, but again, we're dealing with a terminal editor. So with a terminal, you inherently have a disadvantage. Overall though, pretty good experience. Keep in mind that this is a beta product. Oh, I did forget to mention that the fact that by default is using Claude Sonnet 4. But if you want to switch it to GPT-5, you could use a environment variable. You just got to basically do it before you spin up the terminal. So you just pass that command in. Overall, pleasant experience, super excited about it. Very, very early preview. So I'm actually curious to know what you guys think about this entire tool. So put some comments in the chat. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Dwayne and I'm focused on building five coded production grade applications on Cloudflare infrastructure. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to click on the subscribe button and I'll see you in another video. Have a wonderful day.